Hi friends, I am Vaibhav Shivastam from Vaibhav E-Learning Academy. Today we are going to start a new topic in class 10 science that is heredity. And in this video we are going to complete these topics. In today's videos we are going to discuss about the introduction to what is heredity and then we are going to discuss about the basics of DNA, chromosomes, chromatins, haploid, diploid etc. And then we are going to learn about what is genetics. After completing this much part of heredity, we are going to complete, we are going to start, go into genetics. Now in genetics, we are going to learn about cross, which is monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross. We are going to learn about two types of crosses, that is monohybrid and dihybrid. And along with that, we are going to learn how to draw the Pareth square. And then the last topic, we are going to learn about the sex determination. So this is going to be a long video. So I hope you enjoy this video. So let us start the topic with the first one that is heredity. Now what is heredity? Now before moving on to the main topic, we have to first understand the things which are happening in our life. When parents reproduce, then we get a child which has some characters which are inherited from their parents. The characters which are inherited are known as inherited characters or traits which we also uh, denominate it under the topic of heredity. Let us start with the first basic topic of what is heredity and then we will be learning about one illustration and after that we will start the main topic. So starting with the first one which is heredity. We are going to write the definition about what is a heredity. The transfer of information or traits or you can also say characters from the parent to the offspring which is also the child is known as heredity or in simple words we can say the transfer or the study of the transfer of the information from the parent to the offspring is known as the heredity. Now along with heredity comes a very important term that is known as variation. Now what is actually a variation? Variation as the name suggests over here let me write variation. Variation can be defined as a change in the characters is known as a variation. Now what is a heredity? Heredity is a transfer of information or traits which is from the parent to the offspring and variation, what is variation? When the characters are being transferred from the parent to the offspring there might be slight changes or slight mutations due to which variations will arise. So variations are nothing but a change in the characters. Before moving on to the in-depth topic about what are the DNA and what are the, how is heredity studied, we have to first understand it through a simple and a common illustration. This illustration is about how any, how any organism, in this case we are taking a bacteria, if it reproduces, how are the characters transferred from the parent to the offspring or the child. So for that we are going to draw some diagrams over here. This diagram will explain about the changes or how does the variation take place inside a bacteria. So here let us assume this is a parent bacteria which has some information over it. Something like this. And then it also has This is the parent, parent bacteria. This is the main bacteria and we are assuming these are the characters. These characters can be anything, for example, the color of the, the it can be characters, many characters in the bacteria, there is no color. 
So the parent bacteria. Now, when this bacteria reproduces, it means it divides actually. So it gets it gets two offspring. One this one and this one. So now here, since we have learned the topic of heredity, heredity means the transfer of the characters. Now this characters is to be transferred into its two offspring. How was it transferred? Let us see. It is variations are observed over here. Now this is one offspring. Here what we see? These are the characters as the parent. These characters are similar as to the parent characters, like this one. And what is this? This is known as a variation. That is known as variation. Let us take one more, which is like this. Now over here also we can see that this is the same old character and this is a variation. Character and a variation. Now what is going to happen is both of these are going to divide once again. Last time these are going to divide. This is also going to divide. These are the information traits. Now over here what we see is that from parent bacteria to the first generation. This is actually known as the first generation. This is the first generation. Over here what we see that in either of these there is a separate variation. Now when this variation again reproduces they get their progeny gets another new variation which is over here. Let me draw, let me complete the drawing. And like this, this is the second generation of this one and let me draw, complete this also. last one over here. Now here let us observe what has happened over here. And now this one is known as the second generation. This is the second generation. Now this thing describes uh, how the Hereditary and variation take place inside a particular organism. So this is a parent bacteria. This bacteria has four characters, four unique characters to the parent bacteria. When this bacteria divides or when this bacteria reproduces, then what happens is most of the original characters are retained and there is a slight variation. Now what happens? Why does this variation occur? This we are going to learn just in some in a few minutes we are going to learn about that. But let me tell you a basic idea. Variations occur because there is a mutation in the DNA. During cell division, the DNAs that are the deoxyribonucleic acid which carry the characters, we will learn in a few minutes, they exchange and when they exchange, they copy each other's DNA. When the DNA copying takes place, there is a slight mistake or there is a slight mutation which occurs due to which a variation is seen over here. Majority, 99% of the characters are similar as the parent one. So we can see that three characters are same, just one character is variated. Now, since in this progeny one character has variated, it does not mean that the other progeny will also get the same variation. For example, if here this character is variated, but if you see over here, the top character is not variated. It means that the top character is the similar as the parent one. Here another variation is seen. So here the character is this character. Another variation is seen over here, but whereas this character is not variated. 
Hence, we can say that there are majority of the characters which are similar than similar between the parent and the progeny. But there is a very slight variation which is occurred. And here we can see that there is one variation occurred in one character. Now, let us assume this progeny also divides in the future. This is also divided. Now, after div dividing, if you look at both the progenies, what do you see common? The common thing is these two progeny, these two characters, which are taken from this parent, these two characters are same over here. This variation, now this variation becomes an inherited character for the next progeny. It means that these four characters were the character for the progeny. Now, these four characters are the character for this progeny. So, hence, in both of the progenies, you can see that this character is common. In the above progeny, a new variation is seen. That is known as a new variation. The new variation is over here. And in the below progeny, another variation is seen, which is over here. Similar thing occurs over here, in this progeny. This progeny again divides into two separate progenies. This variation is common in these both the plants. It means that these both are the progeny of this parent. Then we can see there is a new variation over here and there is a new variation over here. Now what do we understand from this? The transfer of this trait is known as heredity. And the transfer of this trait is known as variation. And in this chapter we are going to learn how the heredity and variation transfer takes place. We are going to learn how does the character from a parent goes to the character to a progeny and we are going to learn how are new variations created. This was the introduction of what we are going to learn in today's video. So now let us move on to the next topic that is the basics of genetics. Let us see. So now, till now we have noticed about how the heredity and variation takes place. Now we have learned about variation. What is variation? When there is a change in the characteristics. Now the question is, importance of variation. Why? Does variation take place? We are going to understand this through an example. Suppose there are a group of bacteria living in an area. Now, there are two types of bacteria, U bacteria and RK bacteria. U bacteria are the true bacteria which we can see around us most of the times. Then we have the RK bacteria. RK bacteria are special bacteria. These bacteria have a high tolerance capacity. One of the type of RK bacteria is known as a thermophilus. Now what is thermoacidophilus? Thermoacidophilus. Now they have the power to withstand extremely high temperature. But we are not going to move up. We are not going to talk about that because that is an entirely separate species. We are not going to talk about that. That is why I have given this introduction. We are not going to talk about that genus because that is a separate species itself. We are going to talk about a new bacteria, a normal bacteria. Now suppose there is a group of bacteria. And in one of the reproduction, like in one of the variation is resistance to temperature. Now this resistance to temperature does not equate to the URK bacteria. That is an extremely high level. Here we have a slight level, like slight increase. So suppose there is a bacteria which when reproduced, another new variation is created and that variation is tolerance to high temperature. Now suppose there is suddenly an increase in temperature in the environment. Now, when there is an increase in temperature in the environment, all the other bacteria will die. But the bacteria with that special variation, that will not die. That is why we say that variation is important. It, one more example was given in the NCRT book. That was the elephant and beetle experiment or even the crows and beetle. So, there are so many beetles in an area. All the beetles are red in color. Now, what happens is, when a crow, a crow likes to eat beetle, a crow can easily spot a red color beetle. One of the variation of beetles was a green color beetle. When the green color beetle came, that green color beetle was able to camouflage it. Like it was able to hide between the leaf. Hence the crow was not able to see the green color beetle. Now here what we say that variations are important. Why are they important? It increases the chances of survival. The first point is increases the chances of survival. Second point. In the table which we have drawn, like in the drawing which we drew over there, in that we notice that variation is for sure. Like it doesn't matter whether you are perfectly dividing or not, but still variation is very important. Variation occurs, you can't resist, it is irresistible. 
So hence we can say it is the basis of reproduction. So we can say that it increases the chances of survival and it is actually a basis of reproduction in the it may be in any organism, either human being or any other organism works. So it increases the chances of survival and it is the basis of reproduction. Now, when we say that it increases the chances of survival, what does it mean? Increasing in the chances of survival means that it can be better adapted to that area. What is the meaning of better adapted? When we took the example of the bacteria, the bacteria was able to survive because it got adapted with its surrounding. What was the surrounding? The surrounding was the high temperature. It was able to adapt from that surrounding. It was able to adapt that temperature. Hence, we can say that it helps in adaptation to a new environment. Here, the new environment in our case was a extremely, or not extremely, but high temperature. So these are the importance of variations. Now after importance of variation, we were supposed to discuss about the DNA, but before the DNA, we are going to discuss about the basics of a, uh, we are going to just discuss about what are these traits. What is the meaning of trait? Trait means nothing but the character. There are two types of traits. The first type of trait is actually known as acquired trait. acquired trait and the second type is known as inherited trait. Acquired trait and inherited trait. Now what is trait? Trait is nothing but character. As the name says acquired. Now actually it is a confusing word over here. Acquired means many people think that we acquire from our parents but that does not mean acquired. Inherited means the same thing. Inherited means acquiring from the parents. What is acquired? Acquired traits or acquired characters are the characters which we get or which we acquire after the birth. Those characters are called acquired characters or acquired traits and these traits are neither inherited nor transferred. It means that you won't get that trait from your parent and you won't transfer that trait to your children. So let us take one example. One best example of this is an ear piercing. Now what is ear piercing? Ear piercing means making a hole in the ear. This ear, this pierced ear is not available in a child. Why? Because that is acquired character. If for example a child pierces his ear after his birth, after his after he is born, then when he reproduces, his child won't get the pierced ear. It means that this is an acquired trait. Another example is driving, for example driving. No child learns driving as it is born. After birth, it learns how to drive. Driving is also a character. Driving is also a trait. So this trait is neither inherited from the parent nor his child can start driving since he is born. So hence we can say that these are the acquired traits which are neither inherited nor they are transferred. And the other way we have inherited traits. What are inherited traits? The traits which we get from our parents and we have the capacity to give it to our own children that is known as a inherited trait. So just get uh, an example of this inherited trait is color of the eye, color of the hair, length of the hair, type of the hair, curly or straight and etc. There are so many different possibilities of a inherited trait and there are so many different possibilities of a acquired trait. Let us write down the definition over here. The trait that cannot be inherited inherited not transferred or we can say the character that can neither that can neither be inherited nor transferred is called Acquire trait. We, uh, we learn this during our lifetime. We 
gain this during during our lifetime and examples are peers here driving tattoo etc tattoo also if you get a tattoo it does not mean that your child will be born with a tattoo with it then we have an inherited trait the traits which are inherited and get transferred are called inherited traits examples are eye color in some cases blood group is also an example hair type etc so these are the differences between an acquired trait and inherited trait acquired trait is a trait that can neither be inherited nor be transferred is called acquired trait we gain this during our lifetime and then examples are peers here driving tattoo etc and inherited trait are the trait which are inherited and get transferred are called as inherited traits example eye color blood group also in some cases and tattoo not tattoo sorry hair type hair color etc so this was about the differences between an acquired trait and an inherited trait now we are going to learn we are going to understand one case all the concepts in heredity are coming from a special case only we have a case and to answer that case we have a whole topic now over here the case is suppose there is a man and a woman the man has the uh, color of the eye blue color the man has a blue eye color and the woman has the brown eye color now the man has blue eye color the woman has brown eye color when they reproduce what color will the child have will it have brown or will it have brown color will it have blue color or will it have a mixture of both the colors most of the time the answer is the mixture of both the colors but in the health day topic we are going to discuss in what conditions do we get blue color and in what condition do we get brown color so let us look at those topics let us see so now we have discussed that there are some informations which are transferred from the parents to the children now the main question is how are the characters transferred we have discussed about the question right will the baby will have a blue color eye or a brown color eye now to understand how these colors are transmitted and how these colors are transferred we have to learn first how are they transferred like we have to learn about how they transfer exactly so how are they transferred they are transferred through something which is known as dna dna as we all know what is dna it is deoxy ribo nucleic acid dna means deoxy ribo nucleic acid d n a now what is a dna before moving on to what is a dna we have to understand where do we find a dna we find dna in a cell so let me draw a cell over here suppose this is the cell this part of the cell is called as nucleus this is the cell membrane and this is the nucleus now this nucleus has a small spherical thing which is known as nucleolus but that is not our field of concern our main importance is like our main target is what is a dna now actually in the nucleus along with nucleolus there are some thread like substances these thread like substances are known as chromatins and these chromatins are made up of dna made up of dna so what is actually a dna dna is actually a double stranded helical 
structure which carries genes now this is a new term what is a gene now it is a double stranded strand strand in the set is something like this one strand this is one strand and then the second strand of the dna this is actually known as a dna it is actually double helical or oh, sorry double stranded double stranded means there are two strands helical means spiral like the s shape the shape of this this is known as the dna structure it is helically in the shape so this is known as a dna structure what is this it is a deoxy ribonucleic acid it is a nucleic acid it means that this and uh, not it means that it also means that this dna is the carrier of a gene now what is a gene we'll be understanding gene in a few moments but before moving on to understanding genes we have to understand what is the chromatin function now actually whenever there is a division there are two types of division there are two types of cell division one is known as mitosis and one is known as a meiosis now what is mitosis mitosis is a cell division which occurs in our day to day life every day occurs for example when we scratch our like skin then it regenerates it grows again that is known as mitosis division occurs once in every 24 hours and then there is one another type of division that is known as meiotic division now here we are going to learn mainly about the meiotic division meiotic division is not so known as meiosis in meiosis there is a like decrease in the gametic number now what is gametic number to understand that we have to discuss the concept of chromosomes so now the main concept is of chromosome we will be drawing this thing again because we need this the concept of chromosome now what is chromosome whenever a cell has to divide then it forms some structures which are known as chromosome this is the cell that is a nucleus this chromosome is an x type x shaped structure we usually draw it as x shaped structure because but there are still x and there is y and there are also different types of chromosome structures but we usually denote them as a this x shaped structure now this is actually the chromatin thread chromatin thread when this chromatin thread align like this they are very closely aligned and they form this structure a solid mass which then later becomes something like this a thicker one this is known as chromosome these are known as chromosomes what is this chromatin actually this as uh, this chromosome is made up of chromatin which contains dna plus histone proteins what is the dna plus histone proteins this chromatin thread if you zoom in you will find that this is the dna and this dna this is actually dna and these are the histone protein or histone protein structures in them more properly so let me draw that again over here what is this this is the dna these dna are actually combined with the help of histone proteins and then there are actually eight histone proteins octahedral structure this is and then they combine together they come closely and to form a chromatin and this chromatin then forms a chromosome so what is the basic idea from dna we get chromatin from chromatin we get up to chromosome now these chromosome are the ones which divide during meiosis what happens is the sperm and the ovum sperm is the male gamete and ovum is the female gamete when they both fuse together there is an exchange of genetic material takes place so what actually happens is suppose this is the male gamete and this is the female gamete 
so a genetic material, uh, male's chromosome and female's chromosome, when they both combine, what happens actually is, some part at the end, these contain the characters of the female. Now, let me express it properly. Suppose this is the male chromosome. And suppose this one is the female chromosome. Color is important, male chromosome and male chromosome is black color, female chromosome is blue color. Just for example. So when they both divide together, they both will combine. When they combine, then exchange of uh, exchange of information takes place. So what happens is actually at their tip there is some information of the female also and in the tip of the female there is the information of the male also. So this thing occurs during meiosis. So what happens over here is this is known as the transfer of gametes taking place. When the gametes are transferred, the question is how are characters transferred? What is characters? Characters is actually nothing but a gene. I will be explaining gene, what is a gene. So how are characters transferred? They are stored in the form of gene. And uh, since from, from the previous definition, we know that DNA contains genes. DNA contains gene. So this DNA contains gene. And what is chromosome? Chromosome is nothing but a DNA. If you see, if you look at from the wider view, chromosome is nothing but a gene, uh, DNA. And the DNA contains the gene. And the gene contains the information of the characters. How does the gene contain information of characters? We will be discussing that in a moment. So this gene contains the characters, uh, DNA contains the character of the gene and gene contains the characters inside it. So when these both male and female, when they both are fused together, then what happens is there is some transfer of information taking place. When the information is transferred, we say that the DNA is being copied. When the DNA is copied, then some variations take place or then some mutation takes place or that is that is known as inaccurate DNA fingerprinting, I guess that is, but that I don't know about that. But DNA when they are copied, then it is not hundred percent accurate. Some variation take or some mutation takes place, which then helps in the process of the variations. And when these things happen, this contains the variation, this contains the properties, this contains the characters. So we can say that the characters are transferred. Let me explain it one uh, once again. Suppose this is the DNA. No. Let me explain the concept of gene first. What is a gene over here? So when you see over here, gene. For understanding gene, we are going to draw a DNA. This is the DNA. Now these are the two strands of DNA, which I am opening it like this. These are the two strands of the DNA. Now, what happens over here is there are some specific portions of these strands which are modified for special functions. These areas are called gene. In detail we will be learning in the 11th and 12th classes but actually according to 10th class this is a DNA. When you this, this DNA is a double standard DNA. When you unfold each and every strand of this DNA you find that there are some specific areas that are known as gene. This gene actually contains characters in the form of proteins. So gene is nothing but a protein, but that protein contains some characters. The characters can be of eye color, hair color, hair type, etc. But actually what is the main concept is, there is a DNA. When you unfold the DNA, you find there are two strands. And there are some regions in the strand which contain the genes. The other regions are waste that are not impo important. But these specific regions are known as gene. And these genes contain the characters. Now, genes make up to form the DNA. This DNA along with histone proteins. What is histone? Histone is a protein. Along with histone protein, they combine to form a chromatin. This chromatin, when they... Chromatin are actually untangled situation in the normal cell, but when they have to divide, they come together, they closely form association and call, we call that as chromosome. Now, this thing occurs in a male as well as in a female, in a male sperm and a female egg. So, this 
is what happens when the cell is about to divide. So this is for example a male chromosome and this is for example a female chromosome. Male chromosome is made up of male DNA which has male genes. Female chromosome is made up of female DNA which has the female genes. It means this chromosome has information of a male and this chromosome has information of a female. When they both reproduce, new types of chromosomes are formed which contain the characters of both males and females and this is transferred to the baby or this is transferred to the progeny and hence we can say that the chromosomes are, uh, sorry, the characters are transferred. So how are characters transferred? Where are characters stored? Characters are stored in genes and the genes are actually present in DNA. DNA combined to form chromatin. Chromatins combine to form chromosomes. Two chromosomes when they divide their information gets mixed up or their information gets transferred and then this character is transferred to the progeny. But our question whether the child will have a blue color eye or a brown color eye, we cannot yet answer that question. Why? Because this has both male characters and both female characters. So we do not know whether male in the sense it has both father's character and mother's character. We still don't know that the father character blue or the mother character brown. Which character will come up? Now to answer that question comes the concept of uh, comes the concept of the traits. Actually, they are not these traits. Comes the concept of alleles. What are alleles? We are going to discuss what are alleles and what are the dominant and recessive alleles. So let us see. Now coming back to the case which we have taken. The case is when the father has a blue color eye and a mother has a brown color eye. What will be the eye color of the child? So we are going to understand that topic in detail and then we are going to learn about an allele. What is an allele? We are going to discuss it over here. Now suppose there is father and then we have mother. This gives a child and let me write the same thing one more time because there are two cases. Father plus mother gives a child. Now we took two, uh, like we are going to take the same cases but in two different methods. Now here we have taken father has blue color eye and the mother has brown color eye. Another case with the same father has blue color eye and mother has brown color eye what will be the color of the child's eye. So let us take in the first case, suppose the color is blue and in the second case, suppose the color is brown. This is the question which was arised during the previous centuries and during the previous times. We had to find out how will you predict what will be the color of a child's eye or what will be the character of the children from the parents. To find that, there is a this uh, discovery of a new term or not discovery naming of a new term that is known as alleles now what are alleles alleles are alleles are actually alternating forms of a gene alternating forms of a gene are known as alleles. Now what happens is when the uh, when the blue color of the father's eye it means that the allele in the father eye is the blue color. Actually allele means contradicting genes. What is a gene? We have discussed that gene is actually nothing but a character which is present inside the DNA in the form of proteins that is known as a gene. To identify the color of the child's eye we are going to learn this allele topic. Now what did we say? Gene is inside the DNA. So if we say that the color of the child's eye is blue, then we can say that the father's blue color allele was dominant. Dominant in the other's world we say strong. And here the mother's gene allele which was actually recessive. Recessive or we can say weak. Now how do we decide which is strong and which is weak? We will discuss that in a few moments. Now if the child's color is brown, then we say that the father's blue color allele was recessive. Which is actually weak. Allele over here we can just say directly as character. Because here there is an alternative form of a gene 
gene contains character so instead of character we usually say it as a uh, instead of gene we usually say it as a character so father has a dominant allele and mother has a recessive allele allele is actually alternative forms of a gender gender a gene sorry then here if the father has recessive allele and the child has brown color then we say the mother has dominant which is strong hence the child has a brown color file so when the mother's allele is stronger then the child will will be in favor of the mother and when the father's allele is stronger then the child will be of the father so this is the actually concept of what is an allele now since we have introduced the term dominant and recessive we have to identify the differences and what is a dominant allele and what is a recessive allele for that we are going to differentiate both of them so let us see the differences between a dominant allele and a recessive allele now we are going to be learning about what is the difference between a dominant allele and a recessive allele now when we say that the child has got the color and we have also discussed about how does a division take place does it mean that if the child has blue color does it mean that it got only the father's chromosome does it mean it did not get mother's chromosome or if the color of the child's eye is brown in color does it mean that the father's chromosomes or father's character were not introduced no it does not mean like that actually when division takes place when the child is born when the uh, embryo or like zygote starts dividing it actually has both the characters both the characters of mother and the father now in both these characters which character is a stronger one which character can establish its dominance that character will be shown in the progeny and the character which is not able to show its dominance it won't be present it won't be shown in the progeny but if you look at its chromosome if you look at its chromosome it will have the characters of mother also hence if you see in the child which has blue color eyes if you look at its dna that is known as genotype and which we look that is it has blue color eye it is known as phenotype we will discuss this in a minute but if you look at the child which has a blue color eye if you look at its dna it will have both blue color eye chromosomes or blue color eye genes and brown color eye gene but the thing is since blue color eye gene is more powerful since it is dominating hence that character will be shown so we can say that the dominating character can be shown even if there is a recessive character if the recessive character is present then also dominating character can show its dominance if the recessive character is absent then obviously it will show its dominating power and one more thing these alleles are represented by capital letters and small letters a dominant allele is represented by capital letters and a recessive allele is represented by a small or running letters so actually what is a dominant allele the stronger allele allele out of the two is called dominant one more term one more thing to remember when we talk about allele we will always talk about con contradicting pairs and when they are contradicting it means that they are in pairs so one is for example tall and one is short so both are actually in pairs one is the opposite one other is the opposite of that opposite one so the stronger allele of the two is called dominant allele and then it shows even it shows itself even in the presence of recessive allele so when recessive allele is present then also it can show its presence and it is denoted by capital letters example tallness or since we have taken the example of eyes we'll take blue so capital b capital b or we can also say capital b small b now when we are talking about the contradicting points for example if we take tallness suppose in tallness tall tallness is actually the 
dominant allele. Suppose tallness is the dominant allele. Then tall character will be represented as capital D and short or dwarf character will be represented as small p. So capital means dominating and small means recessive. So over here you can see that the capital B capital B. If there is a capital B capital B. One capital B, so when we write this capital B capital B, we mean that one is from the father and one is from the mother. And in our case, it was capital B small b. Capital B and small b. Capital B was blue which is from the mother and small b was brown from the, sorry, capital B was blue from the father and mother. Actually over here, this capital B, this blue is from father and this blue is also from father only. So this is from father's side, father's side blue, blue and from the father's side blue and the mother's side is brown. So this is actually, both of the conditions are actually a dominant allele condition. Actually what happens over here is, we have to learn about a concept known as diploid. Now what is diploid? Diploid means two sets of chromosomes. When there are two sets of chromosome, then that is known as a diploid condition. Now, we have written over here tall, right? Let us write this over here. How will you explain a diploid condition? We know that the humans have chromosomes. Even plants have chromosomes. And those plants' chromosomes also contain gene. So, for example, when there is a plant, which is a tall plant. And there is a plant, which is a dwarf plant. Dwarf plant and a tall plant. Dwarf in the sense short. So, since it is deployed, see this tall plant and we are assuming this tall plant has both the tall characters. It means homozygous and heterozygous, I will be explaining this in a second. But since here we have BB, it means blue, blue, both are from father. Let us assume that this tallness is also both are from his parent, father, parent, TT. Why do we write always two? Because the plant is deployed. Deployed means there are two sets of chromosomes. Even in humans we have written capital B, capital B, capital B, small b. Here capital B is from the father side. One set of chromosome is from father's side and one set of chromosome is from the mother's side. That is why there are two sets of chromosome in our human body. Same thing is applied in the plants. Here also both the sets of chromosomes are obtained from a single plant in the sense. Maybe you can say. But this does not mean that it does not have the mother's character as well. So here it is capital T, capital T. It means that this is a diploid. Similarly, if we say dwarf, then we represent it as a small. Small t and small t. This is known as a dwarf character. Now when these both are multiplied or when these both are bred together, then there is a possibility that either it is tall, either it is a dwarf. There is no middle between. So what we have discussed from this, this is actually haploid. What do you mean by diploid? So this is actually plant body. But when we talk about gametes, in gametes are haploid. Diploid is represented by 2n, where n is the number of chromosome. And here haploid means n, where n is the number of chromosomes. So 2n means diploid condition, single n means haploid condition. Now the gametes are in haploid condition. So here from the father, one gamete was blue gamete, which is capital blue, and one was from the mother, that is small blue. When these both combine, then we get this condition. When one of the characters was from father's side, and the other character was also from the father's side, then we call this as capital B capital B. This is this condition over here. So hence we can say that the dominant allele shows itself in the presence of a recessive allele as well. So here we can see that there is a recessive allele present. Recessive allele is present. But still, if you look at the color of the eye, it will be blue. And this one is also blue. So we can say that it shows itself in the presence of recessive allele as well. So this was the concept of dominant allele. Then after dominant allele, we have the concept of a recessive allele. What is a recessive allele? The name recessive suggests itself that recessive means it is weak. So the weaker allele of the two is actually a recessive allele. And it cannot show itself, it cannot show itself in the presence of dominant allele. 
it means that whenever there is a dominant allele, for example, in this case, then that it won't be then the recessive allele will not be able to show its character. Then it is denoted by running letters. What are running letters? The letters which can be written like R, U, N, N. So this N, this R, these are running letters that we are writing them in one flow or we can write them as small letters. Example, in our case, small b and small b. There is a case when this is a small b, small b. See, actually we have discussed one case when there is a father, there is a mother, there is a child and we wrote brown color. Now the brown color, we had written the case that the mother is the dominant over here. But there is one more case in that Maybe that the father's characteristics or the father's gene were not at all transferred. They were not transferred, only the mother's genes were transferred. That is why it gives small b, small b, which is actually brown color over here. So this is the concept of dominant allele and recessive allele. Dominant allele is the stronger allele of the two and this one is dominant. It shows itself in, even in the presence of recessive allele. When there is recessive allele present, then also it can dominate over it and then it is denoted by capital letters. Capital letters means capital B, capital B or capital B and small b. So actually over here dominant in these two, capital B and small b, capital B is the dominant one, small b is the recessive one. Then talking about recessive allele, the weaker allele out of the two is known as the recessive allele. Uh, it cannot show itself in the presence of dominant allele. When a dominant allele is present, then the character will not be shown and it is denoted by running letters of the small letters that is small b and small b. This was the differences between a dominant allele and a recessive allele. Now we are going to learn about the genetics topic. We are going to enter into the topic of genetics. Now why do we need to enter the topic of genetics? Till now we have discussed that when there is a color of, we took one character over here actually. This is known as monohybrid but we will discuss again in detail. We took only one character over here and then we predicted how will it form. We found out that if the child has blue color eye then the father is dominating in our case and if the child has brown color eye then the mother is dominating or the father's character are not shown. But now how can we compute this? How can we calculate this? How can we assume that what is the, what is the color of the eye of the child going to be? To identify that comes the branch of science which is known as the genetics. So let us look at what is genetics and the details of it. Now we are going to learn about the topic of genetics. Now what is a genetics? Genetics is a science, it is a branch of a science which studies about these gametes, these which studies about the variation and which studies about the hereditary. So let me write down the definition about what is a, uh, what, what is a genetic. The branch of science which deals with the study of heredity is known as the genetics. The branch of science which studies the heredity is known, not heredity, heredity and transfer. Of gene is known as genetics. So the branch of science which studies the heredity and transfer of genes is known as the uh, genetics. And now we have to discuss about the father of genetics. Father of genetics. Father of genetics is Gregor Johann Mendel. Now the father of genetics is actually Gregor Johann Mendel from 1822 to 1884. He was born in 1822 and he was dead in 1884. So Gregor Johann Mendel is known as the father of genetics. Now what is the story of Gregor Johann Mendel? So actually we are not going to write the story over here, I am just going to say it. So Gregor Johann Man uh, Mandel studied in a Montessori and then he his later educations were from the University of Vienna. In the University of Vienna, he did mathematics and science. So he completed his mathematics and science studies in the University of Vienna. Then he tried applying for teaching job. 
but actually he did he was not successful in that he was rejected in that so once he he came back to his home in his home he had a small garden so once he was just looking he was strolling in his garden he was looking or he was watering the plants in his garden he noticed some pea plants he saw that he had two types of pea plants one pea plant had white color flower and one pea plant had violet color flower now he was interested in these topics so what he did was he took both the pea plants he took separate pea plants and then both the pea plants he combined them in, in combined the sense he tried to interbreed them he tried to breed them and he tried to predict what is going to be the progeny what color of the flower will the progeny have will it have violet color will it have white color or will it have a mixture of both the colors by that time no one knew about this topic of uh, inheritance or this topics of uh, gene transfers alleles so that is why he tried to apply some different combinations he actually first of all what he did was he took a tall plant he took a short plant he then bred them so after breeding he expected the plant to be of middle height but actually the plant was tall height he was confused then what he did was he tried getting two more three more characters along with the height like seed color pod shape pod color he tried so many different varieties he tried so many permutations and combinations and then finally he figured out the concept of whole genetics that is why he is known as the father of the genetics and gregor johann mendel applied mathematics and science knowledge together he combined the knowledge of mathematics and science together to form the new branch of science that is known as a genetics so this was the story about the father of genetics that is gregor johann mendel gregor johann mendel gave three laws law of dominance segregation and independent assortment actually we have to study those first but first we are going to learn about what are the different types of alleles now we have learned about two types of alleles that is recessive and dominant but when you combine both the alleles they form two types one we saw capital b capital b and one we saw capital b and small b so here we will be learning about what is homozygous allele and what is heterozygous allele so let us see at the differences between the homozygous allele and heterozygous allele so from now onwards we are going to take examples of the p plant only because the whole genetics is was based on the p plant from the starting of gregor johann mendel time so now let us take an example p plant what is p plant a plant of a p green peas and the scientific name of p plant is pisum Sativum or Pisum sativum. This is the pea plant scientific name that is known as Pisum sativum. That is known as Pisum sativum. Now, actually, how are the genes arranged in the chromosome? Suppose this is the nucleus, not the cell nucleus, and we are taking one strand of the chromosome. When we discussed about the color of the eye. suppose this is the chromosome of the zygote or the child so genes are actually arranged something like this for example this gene has the characteristic of eye color this gene has the characteristic of hair color or hair type okay similarly over here also gene for eye color and here gene for the hair type now what happens is suppose this is from the male and this has the uh, gene type capital p if this gene see we talked about haploid and diploid this condition is haploid plus haploid this is from the male this is from the female if the male has capital b and the female has capital b then the zygote will have capital b capital b suppose a case if the male has capital b and the female has small b then the case will be capital b small b now if there is only dominance of capital uh, there is dominance of small b see actually when we talk about capital b capital b it means that female has blue color um, brown color only but the dominance is of the uh, blue color when both of the characters are small small b small b then it will be like this brown so these are the three types of alleles which will be seen so i guess this is the last time we should be discussing about the eye color now we are going to move on to more scientific one that is the pea plant so as we have taken the pea plant pisum sativum 
we are taking one character. What character are we going to take? Tallness, suppose. Or no, not tallness. We'll take the character of flower color. After this concept, we are going to learn in a pea plant what are the dominating alleles and what is the recessive alleles. Okay. Flower color in a pea plant. Actually, there are two colors. One is violet and one is white. Actually, violet is the dominating one and white is the recessive one. White allele is the dominating one and violet, violet allele is the dominating one and the white allele is the recessive one. Now, when we take the nucleus of the plant, these are the chromosomes. Johann Mendel did not know that the father or the male pea plant or one of the pea plant, it had capital, see violet is dominant, so we are going to represent it as capital V, capital V and small one is represented as small V, so something like this. So he did not know that whether it has capital V or small V, I mean he did not know that it was capital V, capital V or capital V, small V. So we assume that if the gene is capital V or is capital V, and this is also capital V, then the plant will be of capital V, capital V, that is violet color. Now we can say that this is dominant. And since both the alleles are dominant, we call this as homozygotic, uh, not zygotic, genetic. Sorry, here is zygotic only. Homozygotic dominant. So here we say that since it is capital Y and capital Y, we call this as homozygotic dominant or we can say homozygous dominant. Why? What is the meaning of homozygous? Homo means same and zygous means the genetic content. So homozygous means it is a genetic, it is genetically capital, it is genetically dominant but both of the alleles are same. So when we take another case over here. Now, one of the plant color character is capital V and one of them is small v. It means that one character is in the favor of violet color and one character is in the favor of white color. Then what is the allele or what is the allele of the zygote or what is the allele of the child? It is capital V, small v. This is still violet color. Why is it violet color? Because when we were noticing the differences between a dominant allele and a recessive allele, we said that the dominant allele can be shown even when there is a recessive allele. Here recessive allele is present, but still there is dominating allele also. Hence the color of the plant will be, flower will be violet color and this violet dominant is called as heterozygous. Heterozygous dominant. Hetero means different, zygous means gametic condition. So heterozygous means different gametes, but still they are dominant. Now let us take one more case where both are in the favor of white color flower. Then this will be the genotype of the genotype in the sense the genetic content of the pea plant, and this will be actually white in color. Now here there is no dominant. Here we have a recessive character. We know that violet color is the dominating character and white color is the recessive factor. First, the main question is, how can you identify which character is a dominating character and which uh, character is a recessive character? The character which is present in maximum number, maximum amount, that character is known as dominating character and the character which is found in only few species or few examples, that we call it as a recessive character. So here since we have white, which is small b and small b, this is called homozygotic recessive. And there is no heterozygotic recessive because if you take an example of a heterozygotic recessive, still you are going to get the violet color that is a heterozygotic dominant. So these are the three different types of uh, alleles which we took. Actually these are known as the genotype. The next topic which we are going to discuss is what is a genotype and what is a phenotype. So this thing Greha Jogger Mendel Fundamental found it. So, violet color means capital V and capital V over here. It is dominant. 
capital V small v is also dominant, but it is heterozygous dominant, and small v small v is a recessive character, and it is known as homozygous recessive. So these are the examples of a pea plant. We will discuss about, first. We are going to discuss about what are the dominant and the recessive characters of a pea plant. Then we will be discussing about the phenotype and genotype. It is. So now we are going to discuss about some of the dominant characters and recessive characters, dominant alleles and recessive alleles of some of the characters of the plant. Which plant? Pea plant. So first one we have the seed shape. The dominant seed shape of the pea plant is round. And the recessive one is constricted. Round it means it will be like this and constricted means so not here actually here it won't be constricted. Round and wrinkled. Wrinkled seeds. Round seeds and wrinkled seeds in which the round seed is the dominant one and the wrinkled seed is the recessive one. Seed color, yellow color is the dominant one. Yellow color of the pea plant seed is the dominant one, whereas the green color is the recessive one. Then the flower color violet is dominant, whereas white is recessive. Then we have the pod shape. Full pod is the dominant one and here constricted. Constricted pod is the recessive one. Pod color, green color is the dominant one and yellow color is the recessive one. And then we have the length, tall length is the dominant one and the dwarf length is the recessive one. And flower position axial, sorry, here actually tip. Terminal is the dominant one and axial one is the Terminal is the dominant one and the axial one. Actually, over here, axial one is the dominant one and terminal one is recessive. Terminal and axial both I have written opposite. Dominant right here. Yes. Axial flower position is the dominant one and terminal flower position is the recessive one. Now, let us discuss about each and every character. What is seed shape? The seed of the pea plant, if it is in yellow in color, then that seed we call it as a dominant seed shape. And when that seed shape is a color, not shape, color. And when that seed color is in wrinkled condition, seed shape is actually round, sorry. So when the seed shape is round, then it is dominant. And when the seed shape is recessive, then it is wrinkled. When the seed color is yellow in color, then that is a dominant trait. And when the seed color is green in color, that is a recessive trait. When the color of the flower is violet in color, then that is known as a dominant flower. And when it is in the white in color, then that trait is known as a recessive trait. Pod shape, the pod of the pea, the, the, the pea is known as the pod actually over there. The pod shape, if it is full, full in the sense is fully erected, then that one is actually known as a dominant one. And when it is constricted, constricted in the sense when it is folded or when it is like squeezed or something, that one is actually a recessive trait. The pod color, if the color of the pod is green in color, then that is known as dominant trait. And when the pod uh, is actually yellow in color, then that is known as a recessive trait. When the length of the plant is tall, then that is dominant. And when the length of the plant is dwarf, then that is recessive. And when the flower position is action, action in the sense in the sides, then it is a dominant one. And when it is in the terminal, terminal means at the top, then that is a recessive one. So these are the characters. These characters were studied by Gregor Johann Mendel for his experiment in the peas. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So the question in the exam is define the 7 characters which Gregor Johann Mendel studied for the genetics topic. So these are the 7 characters which he studied and he found out which is dominant and which is recessive. How did he find out like this? First, there are two ways to find out. First way is which of the character is visible the most in your surrounding then that is known as dominant one and the second method which he used was he tried to breed the plants himself when he bred the plants himself which character was coming repeatedly that character was known as a dominant character and the character which was coming very rarely that character was known as a recessive character here hence we can say that these are the seven characters in order of which which is the dominant and which is the recessive one in the pea plant 
Now we are going to discuss one of the most important topic that is what is phenotypic character and what are genotypic characters. So let us see. So now we are going to discuss about the difference between the genotype and a phenotype. Now what is a genotype and what is a phenotype? We are going to start with the phenotype. What is phenotype? Phenotype is actually the observable characters in the organism that is known as a phenotype. When we took the case of the brown eyes and blue eyes, when the child was born, for example, it had the blue eyes. So when we are seeing from the outside, it had blue eye. But we did not, we see from the outside, we do not know that whether the child has homozygous blue eye or heterozygous blue eye. So to understand whether it had homozygous or heterozygous brown eye or blue eye, we had to enter inside its chromosome. We had to check its DNA to find out whether both the characters are from blue, blue and both the characters are from blue or brown. Now, when you are studying any organism's character from the outer side, then that is known as the phenotype character. And when you are studying an organism's internal part or the internal chromosomes, DNA structure, then that will come under the genotype condition. So, what is the genotype condition? It is an organism's characters in genes is known as a genotype and we can say here the observable character characters of an organism so the any organisms characters in the genes is called as genotype and in the visual is known as a phenotype now we are going to understand this with the help of an example suppose this is the plant which plant pea plant young pea plant and it has the flowers over here now when this color of the flower is violet color now this violet has two possibilities heterozygous or homozygous if it has heterozygous, then it can have capital B, small b. When it has homozygous, it can be capital B and capital B. Now, when you are looking at this pea plant from outside, then you see that this is a violet color. Violet color. Now, we know that it is a violet color flower. This is known as phenotype. It means that when we are looking from outside, we say that it is a violet color flower, then it is a phenotype. But when you go inside, when you take this and you look inside its genes, then we can find it at whether it is a capital B, capital B or capital B, small b. This is known as a genotype. So when we are saying capital B, capital B, then that is actually a genotype. It is nothing but a genotype. When we are saying about capital T, small t, then we are talking about genotype. When we are saying it is blue color eyes, then we are talking about the phenotype. When we are saying it is a tall or dwarf, then we talk about the phenotype. So this was the main basic differences between a genotype and a phenotype. This was the difference between what is genotype and what is actually a phenotype. Now after this, we have to discuss about the crosses monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross. But before moving on to that, we will try to discuss or we will try to understand that Gregor Johann Mendel took pea plant for studying. Now the question here is, why did he take pea plant? Now there are so many reasons why he took pea plant. Let us look at that topic for, let me let's look at that before moving on to the crosses. Let us see. So now here comes the question which we might have in our mind that why did Gregor Johann Mendel choose pea plant. He would have taken any other plant also. He would have taken any spinach plant or any kind other kind of plant. But he chose only pea plant. Why did he choose that? There are so many reasons of why did he choose a pea plant. The first reason is it is easily grown and maintained. The first reason is it is easily grown and maintained. It means that Pea, growing a pea plant does not require a lot of time, does not require a lot of effort. It can be easily grown and it can be easily maintained also. 
the second reason is it can be pollinated pollinated means reproduced both by self pollination and cross pollination now what is the importance of this line we will be learning this in the crosses when we are performing the cross in the cross we have to breed the plants and during that time we will be doing we will be performing self pollination and cross pollination self pollination means when one pea plant can pollinate itself the pollens from that pea plant can pollinate the own flowers of the uh, gametes or gynoecium of the own plant then that is known as the self pollination and cross pollination means one plant we are pollinating it to the another plant so that is known as a cross pollination it is an annual plant it is an annual plant hence does not require too much time so it is an annual plant in the sense in one year it, it would it would grow and develop completely it is not required so much time for its growth and development whereas other type of plants take too long two years three years to five years to grow and develop that is why he took a small and short pea plant another interesting thing is it had many various kinds of alleles what are alleles alleles are the contradicting or contrasting uh, characters so as we discussed we discussed seven characters seven different characters were present so you could have studied very easily the different different types of characters it had so many various kinds of allele that is why he used it one more thing it it did was it produced large number of seeds it produced a large number of seeds so when one time when you have reproduced it when one time you complete the breeding you will again start the breeding because there are so many seeds which are produced and in his area it was easily available easily available in his region because his region was might be a cold environment that is why it was too much easily available over there so these are the six main reasons and there are so many more but these are the six main reasons which is why he chose the gregor john mendel chose the pea plant for the uh, performing his crosses now let us move on to the new another topic and the most vast topic that is known as crossing or breeding let us see